Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Weber Curry, Manager of Clinical Services at Ascension Counseling Center. You're watching Ascension Counseling Center's video newsletter, where we talk about the services we offer and how you can benefit from them. Thanks for joining us. In this episode, we'll talk about making things right. Suzanne Hamilton, Director of Ascension Counseling Center is here with us with information about how to apologize when you have harmed someone with whom you're in a relationship. Please stay with us for the next half hour or so. Our newsletter begins right after this message. Ascension Parish, a parish steeped in tradition. It's a place where generations of families have continued to enjoy a lifestyle that centers on community living and community celebration. It's a place where we care about each other and we care about ourselves. For more than 50 years, the Ascension Counseling Center has continued the tradition of helping individuals and families change behaviors and change lives. The Ascension Counseling Center. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Hi, Suzanne. How are you today? Good, Lisa. How are you? Good, good. So today we're going to talk about saying I'm sorry and what that means, what it does for the relationship, what it does for the individual who's apologizing, and what it does to the people you're apologizing to. That's right. We're going to talk about saying you're sorry, but more than that, we're going to talk about what do you do when your relationship has been so destroyed or so disrupted that mm -hmm. I'm sorry isn't enough. Okay. And often people think that just by saying I'm sorry, the other person should be over and everything should be okay. But usually it often takes more than that. So we're going to yeah. talk about that. Okay. We'll talk about the role of saying I'm sorry and trying to work it out. And then we'll talk about some things, how to say you're sorry and how not to say you're okay, sorry. Okay, because that's just as important as saying I'm sorry. That's correct. Saying it correctly, okay. So today okay. We're, it, we're really talking about how do you make it right okay. whenever there's a disruption right. in your relationship. Okay. So let's start with, we can talk about why it's important to apologize or make things right. And the first thing we want people to realize is that it's important to take responsibility okay. for your part in whatever happened. Okay. And so often people will um, blame the other person, say it's okay. their fault okay. uh, about what happened. Yeah. But if you're going to make a sincere apology and restore the relationship, mm -hmm. then it's very important to acknowledge your piece of it, mm -hmm. no matter how small or how large that is. And mm -hmm. not only that, but that's the only way, the reason if you're taking responsibility for it, mm -hmm. that's how you're demonstrating to the other person that mm -hmm. you truly are sorry and that you're okay. going to make a difference. Often, sorry comes along after some chronic behavior that keeps happening over and over right. and over. Okay. And so what we're talking about is apologizing in such a way that the other person knows that they're going to make some, you're going to make some changes. Okay. And so accepting responsibility for your piece and what disrupted the relationship is a very key part to letting the other person know that you're on track to make a difference with this. Right, and your behavior is going to change. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things people often say is, well, I don't think I did them anything. I mean, it seemed normal what I said. I don't understand why they're upset. So I think people need to begin to understand that it is about how the other person perceived what you said. So if I'm feeling something was said to me that hurt my feelings, regardless if the other person thinks they didn't, take the time to listen understand that it did bother me, let's talk about it, let's make amends and move forward. But I think that's, that's a part of the challenge. Sometimes I didn't do anything wrong, but. It's yeah. really hard for people, and that's part of human nature. Yes. It's really hard for us to see ourselves as the kind of person who would wound others. And so yeah. it's really important to us to say that, you know, if you're in a relationship with other people, you're going to offend them. Right. They're going to offend you. <laughs> it's just a part of we can't get through life without doing that. And so it's mm -hmm. being able to acknowledge that and it's going to happen. Yes, and it will. accepting responsibility for your piece mm -hmm. of it. And even if you didn't believe you had done something wrong or you can't see it, just allow the other person to explain. 
So I think there's two sets of responsibilities here because then it would be my place to say, here, this is how you offended me. This is what happened. So I think that's important. And, and whenever the other person, the person who caused the offense, is willing to acknowledge their responsibility for mm -hmm. it, then you feel freer to share with them, right. here's how that was a problem. Exactly. Without because you concern. know they're willing to listen to yes. that. Yes, and you don't have to be concerned about, oops, I made somebody mad. So now it's worse. Yeah. Okay. So first is accepting responsibility, and then the next thing is making restitution. And okay. that means whenever it's in your pos uh, whenever it's possible and mm -hmm. when it's in your capability, you want to make changes that will get help to make that even. Okay. So for some people, you know, they automatically think about finances, and there are mm -hmm. people who borrow money or steal money or, right. you know, a, a, another example is sometimes in families, mm -hmm. when the parents pass away, I've heard of them not leaving the inheritance to all their children equally. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one favored child mm -hmm. or older child might get more mm -hmm. and the others get less and that causes a lot of woundedness, mm -hmm. emotional woundedness okay. for people who kind of interpret that as they yeah, didn't there care was as much. Yes. Yes. And um, so there are things like that that where you know mm -hmm. we might need to make restitution, pay people back, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be finances. It could be that it's uh, your time, mm -hmm. um, your efforts, it could be how you express your love and care and affection mm -hmm. for the other person. So okay. it's whenever, whatever you f feel like um, has been denied you, um, that means that the other person can make some restitution for that. Right. It could even be like, I've, I've heard of families that when a parent has a chronic illness, the care falls to just one person mm -hmm. and the other siblings really don't get that involved. Mm -hmm. Your restitution in that case may be your stepping up and taking on the responsibility mm -hmm. that you're able to, um, right. or providing somebody else, or maybe you can't sit with that person, but maybe mm -hmm. you can take on some of the um, you know, business affairs, mm -hmm. or be able to write the checks, or make mm -hmm. the phone calls to schedule doctor's appointments, something else where you can step up and make up for mm -hmm. that lack that you yeah. haven't been doing in the relationship. Okay, so really it's important to talk about it and discuss it so that you can allow the other people to make the restitution that needs to be made. And sometimes an example you've given where one um, child may have seen more favoritism or it appears that way than the other kids do, then it's about explaining. Maybe saying, here's what our parents said before they passed away. I got more of the inheritance because they knew over time you guys would need something and they know that I would still have it and I would be able to share it with you. So sometimes it's as simple as an explanation mm -hmm. that, you know, brings families back together again. Yeah. Yeah. So it, okay. it, anything like that that kind of helps to restore what the balance and, yeah. and what's going on, whether it's financial, emotional, time, mm -hmm. skills, anything like right. that. Okay, good. So you also talk about genuine repentance. Well, repentance really means, you know, we, we're kind of are more familiar with that with a, with, in a spiritual, biblical sense. Biblical sense. sense. And, yes. and really what that means is when, when I repent of something, I'm really mm -hmm. sorry for doing it, but it takes it one more step. Mm -hmm you turn around and you do something different. Okay. So true repentance is changing not only my attitudes, but my behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about repentance, that's what we're talking about. We're talking okay. about not just being sorry, mm -hmm. um, but actually changing, going 180 degrees and doing, some, every, doing things differently right. than what you have been doing. So it's a okay. change of heart, it's a change of behavior. If I'm truly repenting, I'm going to put that aside and never do it again. Okay. So your intentions is to do better. I've, I've actually heard people say, I'm really sorry I did that. Oh, by the way, let me apologize in the future because I'm going to do it again. Mm -hmm. So that's not true repentance. That's it's correct. It's becoming aware and actively working toward changing your behavior. And we'll kind of get into that when we talk about, you know, how to apologize correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's part of the taking the responsibility as well yes. to say, I'm kind of prone to doing this. 
I'm going to be aware of it mm -hmm. in the future. And, and you can call me on it. Mm -hmm. If you see me slipping that way, let me know so I can work on it. Okay. And apologizing is important also because we're requesting forgiveness. Yes. And so okay. apologizing, part of that is requesting forgiveness from the other person for what we've done mm -hmm. and showing them that we really do want that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, but it also involves, you know, it involves us requesting forgiveness from the other person, but mm -hmm. also forgiving ourselves for what we did. Once mm -hmm. we begin to kind of follow this and accept our responsibility and try to make mm -hmm. restitution and repent, mm -hmm. then, you know, when we're doing those kind of things, we're looking at ourselves as, you know, sometimes when we do something that hurtful to another person, mm -hmm it violates our own moral code, our mm -hmm. own sense of ethics. Right. And so when we do that, we need to forgive ourselves mm -hmm. for that as well. Mm -hmm. So we're, when we're repenting, we're making restitution, we're apologizing to the other person, okay. we make it easier for them to be able to forgive us because mm -hmm. it's not just words anymore. Right. We're showing by our actions and by our attitudes mm -hmm. and by our awareness that we recognize that we've been behaved inappropriately. Right, whether we intended to or not, mm -hmm. it happened. And I think also forgiving ourselves allow us to be in that person's presence again. Because if we don't forgive ourselves, we're gonna avoid that person because we're afraid to make that same mistake again, or we think that person is angry with us even though they've forgiven us and moved on. So it's important, like you said, for us to forgive ourselves as well to be able to move on. And, and have the, the conversation about forgiveness, you right. know, um, because if we apologize, truly apologize, and mm -hmm. we're demonstrating, you know, repentance and change and mm -hmm. our commitment to change and improve the relationship, then it's very important to say, do you forgive me? Yes. You know, and agree. get that right on, on the table. And understanding that sometimes the other person may not be able to forgive Not immediately. in that moment, yes. Mm -hmm. It may take some time, but what helps is, as you said, if your behavior follows showing that you've changed. And especially if you've apologized and haven't changed your behavior, you know, it's going to take a little while for the mm -hmm. other person to see the true change on the inside right. of you. And, and then once they do that, they'll be able to forgive. Yeah, if, exactly. if someone has betrayed someone else in a relationship and they continue to apologize and then continue to do the same behavior, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's natural for the other person to be cautious right. and, and not to accept the apology until they see true change. Yeah. That's human nature mm, as well. That is. Okay. So now we're going to talk about things not to say when you're apologizing, which I think is just equally, if not more important than what to say. It really is because yeah. you demonstrate um, taking responsibility, making restitution, mm -hmm. repenting, and forgiveness by um, what you say. The mm -hmm. words that come out of your mouth are going to let the person know whether you're, you've accepted responsibility and whether right. you're going to change. And so, you know, saying to the other person, what, you haven't gotten over it yet, mm -hmm. diminishes the significance of what you did. It right. also makes it seem like it's their responsibility to forgive you, mm -hmm. not your own responsibility right. to show that you've changed. So, exactly. Um, or, or, or here's one, a non-apology is, you know, I'm sorry that you were offended. Again, mm -hmm. that makes it seem like it's the other person's fault because mm -hmm. you did something and they got offended by it. So right. You need I to take the responsibility and to say, I did this and it offended you. Yes. Or as simple as, I'm sorry I offended you. Yes. But when you stick that, that you were offended, you're taking all claims away from it, all responsibility. You just couldn't handle what I said, in mm -hmm. other words. It's, it's what it amounts to. Yeah, it's your okay. fault you were offended. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I have really no responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, so, and it closes off any conversation about the right. behavior and the effects of it. Um, and any chance of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, saying, you know, I asked for forgiveness from God and God's forgiven me for that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful, but you need to be forgiven by the other person that you offended and that you wounded. Mm -hmm. And so it's not enough to say, well, God's forgiven me. So you, you know, it's not yeah. important that you do or so therefore you need to, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not appropriate. It it's needs not. to be, I'm sorry. 
and I need forgiveness from you. Right, because that's oftentimes done in a way to shut the other person down, to say, if God has forgiven me, who are you? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's totally discounting how that other person is feeling. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, another one is, you know, I should be excused from that behavior because of and blank, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. People are making excuses for what they did. And again, they're denying their responsibility for right. that. So they need to say, you know, uh, like some people will say, oh, I, I did that because, you know, somebody else. You know, I, I hear people all the time say, well, I can't trust my spouse because some many other people have let me down. Nobody mm -hmm. else is trustworthy, so right. I don't trust you. You know, those are all of excuses where you're, again, not taking responsibility mm -hmm. for your own actions and right. feelings. And uh, so that should Another be way safe. to blame somebody else. Blaming the other person. Mm -hmm. um, saying, you were just too sensitive about that. I was just joking, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Um, those are we gonna, hear that often, mm -hmm. and you hear that in office environments and workplaces a lot, mm -hmm. you know. You're too sensitive, I was just joking, everybody else laughed, I don't understand why you took it so seriously. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, or saying, why do you always, and then fill in the blank, mm -hmm. why do you always get so upset, why do you always shut the door, mm -hmm. why do you always uh, mm -hmm. complain, you know, those kind of things, um, why, why do you always take offense to what I say. Mm -hmm. Again, that's looking at the other person, blaming the other person, right. instead of saying, you know, what was it about what I said, mm -hmm. or that I say every time, right. that causes offense to the other and person. And I, I think that's key, because if some, if you're consistently saying to someone, why do you get offended? Why did that bother you? Then that's your clue. If you have to say that at least twice, it's time to have a conversation if you didn't the first time mm -hmm. because it's becoming a pattern and you're not paying attention enough to the other person to realize how wounded they may feel by your actions. So I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. You got to really pay attention. Or to say, you know, you sound just like your mother or you sound just <laughs> like your father, you know. That sounds like a sibling. Yeah. <laughs> Between the siblings or the spouses. Spouses will yes. do that, yeah. And, um, you know, they, when you say that, you're making it sound like, um, why are you complaining about things? You know, right. uh, this is who I am, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, you should just be accepting of right. that. You know, you know that's how my mother me. was, so yeah. what do you expect differently from me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or just or saying things like, you know, that's just silly. What's the big deal about that? Why are you making such a big deal out of it? Um, you know, or... or or saying something like, you know, that's just life. That's just how life is. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you should get over it. Right. You know, that means that you're Accept not taking the other it. person's feelings and treating mm -hmm. them as if they're valid and real. Right. Yeah, you know, right. you should just blow it off and not care about it. You know, exactly. Um, so those kind of things. So it, you know, um, a good one is, you know, um, there's nothing I can do about it now. Yeah, I did it. It's done. We can't change it. Get over it and let's move yeah. on. Yeah, and so yeah. instead of recognizing that, you know, even though it has been done and it, you can't undo it, mm -hmm. you know, um, you we'll go back to the restitution. What can we do about that mm -hmm. now to change it, even though we can't change the initial incident mm -hmm. that happened? Can't take back what I said or where we went or who yeah. I told or, you know, we can't undo that, but we can try to change it as much as possible, Going make forward. restitution for what you did. Yeah, because I mean, really at the basis of an apology is something that has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. It may have happened in this moment, a few moments ago, it may have happened weeks ago, but it is in the past and it's important to bring it up so it doesn't occur in the future. And sometimes people just get stuck on that happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But if that person is still talking about it today, it's still bothering them. That's right. And it's time to have a conversation. And sometimes we'll say, you know, just let bygones be got bygones. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I've heard people say, well, just kind of get over it. Uh, I mean, right. if you wouldn't focus on it, don't make a big deal out of it, it wouldn't be a big deal. Right. You know, so all of those are things that kind of diminish the mm -hmm. other person's experience and your responsibility for yeah. what needs to be done. And it makes it difficult for that person to forgive you and move on mm -hmm. because you still haven't accepted how you offended me or hurt my feelings. So that makes it challenging. 
It does. Okay. So we'll move into what to say to apologize effectively. All right. And sometimes okay. people just don't know how to do this. So yeah. just uh, s simply some skills. And you could say, I did it and I have no excuse. That, to me, that's the easiest one. Mm -hmm. I, I have no excuse. Don't know what I was thinking. But please know I wholeheartedly apologize. Yes. Or things like, you know, I'm responsible for that mistake. Mm -hmm. So you're just taking the responsibility. You're taking ownership, right yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another one, it may take a long time to move on from what I've done, but I'm willing to do it. I, I think that one is so unique and touching because it also gives that the person, the person that was offended, the opportunity to, over time, come to terms with what has happened mm -hmm. and to come to terms with the fact that you've apologized. You don't expect that person in that moment to say, all is forgiven, we're okay, we can laugh like buddies again. You allow that person to come to, come to those terms on their own. So I think that's important. That one is important. Yeah. Um, it, to admit, I would have a hard time forgiving me if I were you. Right. So it's a little that bit of empathy. You yeah. understand what the other person is going through mm -hmm. and you're acknowledging for them that the forgiveness may be difficult and mm -hmm. that that's okay. Yeah, very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've damaged your trust. Yes, yeah. a very important one to know Definitely. that, you know, trust is so important and especially like in couples with, you know, if if family members yeah. are, are lying or if there's mm -hmm. infidelity or, you know, kids sneaking out of the house, different right. things like this that mm -hmm. damage trust. Yeah. Very important to recognize when your behavior has damaged mm -hmm. the trust of the other person. Yeah. That, saying that to someone whom you've um, not behaved appropriately or you've taken their trust for granted, it really shatters their walls and makes them receptive to what you say. Because you're acknowledging, yes, I have damaged your trust. So that means a lot to people. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, as we talk about the restitution and, and, and making change in the future going mm -hmm. forward, it mm -hmm. recognizes that you're admitting that you have betrayed that trust right. and now you're going to change, repent, mm -hmm. act in a way that it restores that trust. Right. So important. There's a, a change of behavior that has to happen on the part of the person who's betrayed mm -hmm. and broken the trust. Right, and it has to be a consistent yes. pattern of change in that behavior. Okay, so I was careless, insensitive, thoughtless, or rude. And that's sometimes all we need to say, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what I said was rude, I was rude to you. Right. And I, I'm sorry. I didn't think about how that would have affected you. I was being insensitive, so I'm sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very important. Okay. And so we can also say, I will do the work to fix my mistakes going forward. Yes. And so admitting that it's very important for people. Yes. Yeah. Um, to say, you know, my actions were unacceptable. Mm -hmm. It lets people know that you recognize what you did. Right. Or, you know, you didn't deserve that kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then the wounded party will probably think, that was totally out of that person's character. And for mm -hmm. them to admit that, I can forgive them and we can move on. Mm -hmm. um, or to say my mistake is part of a pattern that I need to change. That mm -hmm. shows the other person that you're taking responsibility right. and the repentance, the part of, you know, I'm going to change mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I, I get it now. I recognize mm -hmm. you're upset. That it didn't just happen one time, it's been an ongoing thing. I finally get it now. Okay, so I will rebuild your trust by. Yes, and that's giving that's blanks them something. to fill in. <laughs> fill in the blank, it yeah. gives you a concrete way of, of what you're gonna do to change things right. and uh, how you're gonna change. And that person knows that not only have you accept the responsibility, but you also have a plan in place on how you're going to do that. Right. And this is important, especially in relationships where this behavior continues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes, you know, some of the examples of where apologizing is not enough is in mm -hmm. domestic violence, where someone yeah. continues 
to mm -hmm. batter and then they apologize and then they batter and then they apologize. And so being able to say, I have mm -hmm. wounded you and right. here's how I'm going to change that mm -hmm. will go a long way to helping restore the trust and yeah. to bringing uh, yeah. healing to that relationship. Definitely, and, and it gives the wounded party um, the ability to watch for those change mm -hmm. behaviors and to be able to say to the other person, I notice you did things differently this time, and I just want you to know I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'm paying attention. Yeah. Yeah, so it helps. Okay. Um, and you also talk about recognizing when you put someone in a very difficult position and letting them know that. Mm -hmm. Letting them know, you know, I know I put you in a difficult position, and so that you understand all of the different issues that go along with whatever happened, you right. know. Uh, Sometimes whenever, you know, people won't know how to respond or mm -hmm. then they, or they get, you put them in between two difficult options right. or two difficult people uh -huh. and, you know, so now they have to work that through and you're letting them know that you recognize that now they're in a difficult spot right. and you want to do what you can to help get them out of that. Exactly, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and we hear this often. I think we started saying this as kids and we've grown up knowing this, realizing that talk is cheap. Yes. To say, I know that talk is cheap. My apology is talk. Mm -hmm. I need to show you how I will change. Mm -hmm. And then so we know that something is going to change going exactly. forward. Exactly. Again, yeah. and it's like you said, you know, uh, w the other person knows how to look for that changed behavior. Right. And when you see that changed behavior, then you can feel more comfortable that mm -hmm. whatever that betrayal was will not happen again. Exactly. It just makes me think about what I grew up hearing my parents and grandparents say. Um, you can talk the talk, but that's not enough. You've got to be able to walk the walk. Absolutely. So that's where we see the behavior change. Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, for some of us have long-standing issues three four five years in our family of things mm -hmm. that have gone down and that have hurt the family relationships right. and so you know it's never too late to go back mm -hmm. and talk about those issues and so you could say I hope I haven't waited too long to give you the apology you deserve mm -hmm. and so you could bring it back up in those terms and just say That's, yeah I know it's long overdue I hope yeah. that it's not too late, yeah. and I'd like to apologize for what I said three years ago. Yeah. Again, to me, that's one of those shattering apologies because if someone had that wall up, he or she, my brother, my sister has never apologized to me. We're never going to be good. It's too late for them to apologize. And all of a sudden, that sibling shows up and says, I recognize it may be too late. To me, that brings all walls down, mm -hmm. and you have to listen to that person and give them a chance. So that's, that's a really good one. And, you know, if we contrast what to say and what not to say, if you say, I realize, you know, that I've waited a long time to give you this mm -hmm. apology, you see how different that feels from, right. what, are you still upset about this? Exactly. It's three years later. <laughs> you know, exactly. That, that feels so different. Definitely. You know? And, and it, it, it means so much more to the person. And then just asking, can you forgive me? Right. You know, Something I apologize. Simple. Can you forgive me? Yes. It's important to add that piece mm -hmm. to the apology. And it is. And I think if someone says to you, maybe in time, maybe not right now, also accepting that and saying thank you. I appreciate you just considering the possibility mm -hmm. of forgiving me. And then, you know, you combine some of these answers to say, you know, I, I know it's going to take us a long time to move on mm -hmm. and I'm willing to do what it takes. And if right. you know what it takes, you state it right there to that person exactly. so that they know what you're going to be doing. Exactly. I think this is great. So you've given us all great tips on how to handle an apology and how to make things right when we've wronged someone, whether it was intentional or not. So these are really good tips. Um, you also give us a resource. So you want to tell us about the resource we can yeah, follow actually, up with? There's a book called uh, When Sorry Isn't Enough, mm -hmm. Making Things Right with Those You Love. And the authors okay. are Chapman and Thomas. Okay. And that's an excellent where, way place to go to read more about this. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, yeah. need a little more in depth or they need to read rather than hear. Mm -hmm. And so this will give you an opportunity to read more about this and get 
a little bit more clarity on all the things that we've talked about and uh, mm -hmm. you know plan out in advance if you know you have to do an apology mm -hmm. think it through plan it out write it out if you need to because right. giving an apology to someone can be an emotionally intense experience mm -hmm. and the higher our emotions go the lower our rational thinking right. goes okay that's exactly. just how the brain works okay exactly. and um, so sometimes when we're in the middle of an apology or in the middle of an, an emotional conversation mm -hmm. it's easy to forget the rational things that we mm -hmm. want to say right. well, write it out plan it in advance if you need to do that mm -hmm. feel free to do that exactly and try and stick to the script because sometimes if someone who we're apologizing to will say something different or will become very emotional, we get off track. So I mm -hmm. think it's a good idea to write out your script, mm -hmm. rehearse it, try it out on someone you can trust yes. to be able to use it. So that's good. Well, once again, Suzanne, thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. It's very useful. Thank you. And thanks to you, our viewers, for spending your time with us for this episode of Ascension Counseling Center's video newsletter. Remember, you can catch replays of the program exclusively on Ascension 21 on the days and times listed on your screen and anytime on Ascension 21's YouTube channel. We hope today's information will help change your life for the better. That's our goal at Ascension Counseling Center for our programs to help change lives. Remember, Ascension Counseling Center is here by way of your support. We're funded by two mill property tax millage, which means that $2 from every $1,000 you pay in taxes goes to support our agency so we can provide free and low-cost mental health and substance abuse outpatient services to residents of Ascension. We're located in Gonzales at 1112 Southeast Ascension Complex Boulevard, off Worthy Road. It's across from the courthouse and next to the health unit. You can reach us by calling 225-450-1016. You can also find us on the web at ascensionparish.net forward slash MH and on Facebook at Ascension Counseling Center. You can also hear us on KKAY AM 1590 every Tuesday from 10 to 1030 AM. Thanks for your support. And until next time, from everyone at Ascension Counseling Center, thank you for watching.